Hello again, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Up first on the hazardous weather graphic, got a flood advisory out for the greater Seward area. Uh, starts uh, later tonight and continues uh, through Sunday. And that's due to the two to four inches of rain that was forecast to fall across the area there uh, by midday Sunday. And that, uh, of course, that storm already spreading the rain on up into the area there, along with increasing winds and gale and storm force winds here, uh, Kodiak Island and Cook Inlet and the western Gulf of Alaska. Otherwise, up to the north, eastern Alaska Range, west of the Toe Cutoff, a wind advisory for, uh, that starts at midnight tonight and continues through Sunday for 30 to 50 mile an hour winds, or actually 20, 25 to 30 mile an hour winds with gusts to 50 miles an hour and that's through the passes there, uh, west of the Toke Cutoff, and then uh, ending around uh, the Healy area. And farther to the north, that's kind of a leftover winter weather advisory from the system came up and through yesterday and overnight last night. Uh, that ends its winter weather advisory for uh, snow and slippery conditions <clears throat> that uh, ends in six, at 6 p.m. in just uh, two or three hours from right now. Uh, that due to a couple inches of snow they received. Otherwise, satellite imagery showing uh, all the clouds left of that uh, very weakened system now that's uh, kind of portion of it's gone off into the Northwest Territories. Another weaker system back over the Northeast, uh, bringing the areas of snow to the uh, Northeast interior, mixing and changing over to rain. Not any really heavy amounts uh, that I saw in the last 12 hours, uh, up to a tenth of an inch in the greater Fairbanks area and up toward China. And that was falling in the form of rain this afternoon with uh, light precipitation back to the Northwest, uh, some light snow along the Arctic coast. And uh, the trailing edge of that, you'll know, actually, a surge coming in, that already kicked into Canada. Uh, brought some rain into the uh, southeast coast, mostly cloudy, with areas of uh, light rain, nothing too terribly heavy, although Yakutat picked up about four-tenths of an inch of precipitation, as did Valdez, but uh, partly mostly sunny skies over northern Cook Inlet uh, during, the, uh, during the day today. Looks like uh, that same sort of thing over the northern portion of the Copper River Basin in toward Northway and back along the southwest coast there in the valleys, the Cuscombe Valley, back out across the deltas, uh, pretty good conditions. Clear skies reported at Nome this afternoon on up into the uh, like Kotzebue Sound area and also off the uh, coast here with some isolated showers falling with a very weak system and some clouds around the Perbolofs, so kind of this band of moisture edging up into there brought some, a little bit of light rain, tenth of an inch over at Adak, so pretty light conditions there. Winds. Not a problem at all, but you can see the uh, next storm here wound up pretty well south of Sitkanak. Uh, they're getting roughly winds up to 30, 35 miles an hour, or I'm sorry, 40 to 45 miles an hour at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Kodiak Island, actually at State Airport in Akiak, and they picked up about a third of an inch of rain in uh, the same time period there with uh, breezy and getting a little moisture up on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula. This mostly just clouds through here, all the precipitation producing action is back down to the southeast here. And also winds, uh, Nelson Lagoon and Port, Port Hyden gusting up to around uh, 30, 35 miles an hour back through there. And as the system pulls northward, those uh, winds will increase. And, as far, and also the rainfall, especially Kodiak Island, up into the western North Gulf Coast and Barron Island, Southern Cook Inlet tonight with gale force winds warnings out for the Cook Inlet area. As you can see tonight, that slow center pulls slowly northward. 969 on the middle, I'm sorry, this is today's map. It's currently uh, well south of Sitkanak yet. And the front uh, coming up across southern Kodiak Island, 
but rain on the increase here all along the North Gulf Coast, kind of linking up with the leftover moisture you had uh, with this trough that brought uh, the lighter amounts of rain here along the Panhandle and the North Gulf Coast. Uh, again, Valdez picking about four tenths of an inch, but amounts will be far greater tonight into tomorrow morning as this lifts up northward, especially southern Kenai Peninsula up into western Prince William Sound, uh, two to four inches of rain likely to fall by midday Sunday. Up to the north, diminishing precipitation and that tending toward uh, rain at the lower elevations this afternoon. So rain and snow showers along the Alaska Range and diminishing precipitation up to the northeast and some light snow, patchy fog, eastern north slope on out to the Arctic coastal areas. I uh, didn't see anything, uh, no snow reported Arctic Village at 3 p.m. Anatovic Pass had fog and kind of cloudy skies here back to the western Arctic coast into the Kobuk Valley. They break out into some clearing, again, as I mentioned, along the south coast of the Seward Peninsula into the yukon Cuscombe Delta, central northern Cuscombe Valley, mid and high-level clouds here over the southeast bearing, isolated showers, very weak trough here near the Perloffs, and kind of unsettled here, central and eastern Aleutians, and those showers getting much more isolated out towards Chimia and for tonight. Now that low comes up into southwestern uh, Shelikov Strait area there, and that's going to bring some pretty good winds into uh, Kodiak, especially the eastern Gulf of Alaska and uh, the uh, Barren Islands tonight with heavy rain pushing into the southern Kenai Peninsula uh, with the front slowly lifting northward here. And look for some mixed precipitation on the north side of that uh, Copper River Basin, especially the southern slopes of the Alaska Range for any elevation be all snow or mixture or just plain rain down lower. And back to the west, northerly winds, uh, not too bad, uh, 15 to 30 miles an hour here, kind of an enhancement in the action of the weak trough there, just barely getting into Adakanaka toward morning, so not too bad of an evening coming up. Still some lingering light snow or flurries here over the northeast interior, but a uh, smaller area, mainly over the eastern Brooks Range, dry for the Arctic coast, uh, possible flurry around Cape Lisbourne, and then Drier conditions, offshore flow, north-northeast winds, could see some clearing, no fog at all, and definitely precipitation free. Isolated rain, snow showers possible for Savunga are for Gamble. Savunga should be dry and no change for the uh, Seward Peninsula there, as well as uh, the eastern Aleutians maybe lose the showers altogether tonight. High pressure over western British Columbia keeping this system, at least southern part, dry tonight. And you can see the front kind of bangs up against it Good southerly flow, jet stream right out of the south there, so that's kind of uh, holding the precipitation. Moderate to heavy Yakutat into the northern panhandle, but could see some sunshine, especially early in the day down over the central and southern uh, east side, down toward At Metlakatla and Hyder. Uh, rain, wind, Kodiak Island up into the North Gulf Coast, tending to become lighter uh, throughout the day, but still pretty windy and wet conditions, southern Alaska breaking out on the south side of that front as it crosses the Alaska Range into the Tanana Valley. Those wind advisories out through tomorrow. Pretty gusty northeast winds here, Yukon Delta, up toward the Seward Peninsula. And some areas of light snow, uh, or snow showers, very light, nothing significant expected up here. Kind of just a widespread, or more or less a widespread area of possible snow chances, or flurries there from the central north slope on out to, uh, oh, possibly weighing right on down to Cape Lisburn but look for dry conditions for the uh, Kotzebue Sound area up to Kivalina and the Noatak Valley. Scattered showers, a little breezy, but nothing too bad out over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea. And could see some clearing, drier slot of air gets down into the Perbolofs. Uh, could see um, maybe some afternoon sunshine there. Moving on to uh, the outlook for Monday. That front uh, kind of breaks up here in the northern areas, a little wave develops here, and that finally pushes it inland as that high retreats over British Columbia. So, Periods of rain, moderate, uh, probably not too heavy, but definitely an increase in those winds. You see gale force winds ahead of that system. Showers and mostly cloudy south central Alaska, especially over toward the Alaska Range of Kodiak Island. Pretty nice over the Copper River Basin and across the east central interior areas, actually back to the west, northern Cuscombe Valley. Chance of snow showers up to the north, weakening low here on the southwest coast, keeps it unsettled there with diminishing winds, windiest on the back side here out of the north. and. Northwest, so but not too strong into the Alaska Peninsula. Some scattered showers, partly sunny for Adakanaka. Lows for tonight, uh, teens and 20s in the northeast, lower to mid 40s here over southern Alaska. And the Panhandle lies tomorrow afternoon near 50 over the southeast coast, upper 40s, lower 50s, south central Alaska, 40s 
to the southwest coast, 20s up to the north. Lows following morning about the same, 15 to 23. Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast in the uh, 30s to near 40 here for the uh, southwest interior. And then the highs on Monday, 20s north of the Brooks Range and 40s lower 50s most everywhere else to the south. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather graphic tomorrow morning. IFR, north slope on out to the central east side of the Arctic coast up there. Some more back to the southeast. Down into uh, marginal to IFR from the uh, Koyukuk Valley into the upper Yukon. Areas of VFR, especially out here to the west from uh, the western Brooks Range to Long Mountains. Southward into Bristol Bay and marginal for much of the Bering Sea. Aleutians though, especially out west, south side of Vedak Apka, breaking out the VFR. IFR in a band up along the North Gulf Coast, western Prince William Sound, and into the Talkeetnas and the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, down to the Aleutian Range, IFR northern Panhandle, VFR, or VFR way to the south. And for the afternoon, that VFR extends northward now, uh, at least to Juneau, but Alphen Cove, marginal, and a uh, small area of IFR in the North Gulf Coast Range, and uh, persistent conditions for the Alaska Range. IFR holding up north, uh, areas of VFR, 40 mile country up Yukon Valley through the central interior, out to the west, just some patchy marginal VFR until you get out to the coast, Bering Sea marginal, until you get out to uh, actually Atka, Adak, on out, VFR. That holds through uh, Monday morning as well. Some marginal stuff slips into Shimmy and Atu to the north marginal or at the Bering Strait. IFR, central eastern Arctic coast there as well as the west side, all the way down to at least a little, little beyond uh, Point Lay, narrow band south side of the Eastern Brooks Range. No change here for the Alaska Range. This IFR now showing up a little better on the southern slopes up toward the uh, south side of Windy Pass, marginal down to Prince William Sound and the Panhandle. And for Monday afternoon, IFR Brooks Range in across eastern north slope to uh, the uh, central part of the eastern Bovertsee coast there. Uh, then a little bit better to the east, marginal VFR west side here out into the northern bearing, VFR from St. George down to the central eastern Aleutians and north side of the Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay, uh, kind of marginal, no change for the Alaska range and IFR there, a uh, patch of it on the central southeast coast, uh, Port Alexander and then also over the northern areas. And for passes tomorrow, Anatovic, marginal VFR with uh, the south side in the afternoon trending toward IFR as a uh, surge of moisture comes up from the south and that'll hold also for Adigan, marginal VFR becoming uh, IFR here on that southern entrance and uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, IFR possible on both eastern entrances and rainy, same trend, same pattern, same forecast, uh, marginal VFR with uh, possible IFR east side and windy. Marginal VFR, look for VFR though for the northern entrance into the Tanna Valley. Isabel, occasionally marginal. And for the uh, Mintasta VFR, only one I think I've got in here that's just plain VFR. Otherwise, uh, Tanita will be mostly VFR. I think there'll be some marginal VFR on the eastern approach. And then IFR for Portage with uh, possible low IFR on the eastern entrance. Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet, all the way north of uh, Eagle there. In fact, actually almost to Old Crow. And then 4,000 feet here over the south-southeast interior. Even warmer, six to 8,000 feet over the southern panhandle. Otherwise out west, not too much of a uh, difference. 2,000 feet, give or take, uh, for the Bering Sea into the west coast. I seeing moisture coming northward. Uh, heaviest over here into the northern panhandle could be considerable moderate rime icing there above about 6,000 feet uh, over toward Yakutat and then nothing down to the southeast and also some terrain enhanced icing above about four to 5,000 feet here for uh, south central Alaska over the mountainous terrain otherwise lighter down here more mixed for the Alaska Peninsula. Jet stream showing uh, next system slowly upper level load pulling northward south to north flow 100 knots uh, otherwise south of the Aleutians ridging Western Canada, once again, 9,000 feet strong, 50 to 60 knot winds cross Kodiak. Behind it, only 25 knots and pretty strong 60 knot winds into the uh, coastal areas of the Panhandle. 3,000 lighter, 35 to 40 along and off the coast. 
45 to 60 in across uh, the uh, Southern Cook Inlet and Southern Cuscombe Valley areas and turbulence looking like this. Severe possible. Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait, uh, right up in across the uh, Kamishak Bay area and Modern Chop right up the Alaska Range, North Gulf Coast, along the Panhandle, Alaska Peninsula, and the Southwest Coast. Another area where the Federal Aviation Administration is using technology in advancing aviation safety is in the use of remote weather cameras as a tool to aid pilots in making safe flight decisions. Hello, I'm Sheila Balistrieri. So in 99, we really started what we currently call the Alaska Weather Camera Program. We say Alaska because it's the only place in the FAA that uh, has this. Um, one, it's available through the internet so that the pilots, their family, their friends, they can all take a look at what the weather's like before you go there. In addition, we have all of that available within all of our flight service stations so that each flight service station technician can call up and look at weather real time. And with that, provide a better briefing, whether it's pre-flight or in-flight for the pilots. Um, by far the most popular thing we've ever done. The weather camera system uh, has been a good one. I'm sure you can tell from the, uh, if you had access to the number of hits that they get that, uh, on each site, that uh, they're well used and uh, they save a lot of gasoline, they save a lot of uh, time for passengers out turning around in weather and coming back when a, when a pilot can just look at the camera and make a decision based on that rather than going out and actually looking at the weather. So when we uh, uh, look at the cameras, and if it's if it's a definite no-go situation, then we're not able. You know, we don't send an airplane out to take a look at it, and then have to just spend the gas and the time and energy to go out take a look at it and just turn around and come back. By placing weather cameras throughout the state, we've certainly come a long way. Today, we have 55 cameras throughout the state, an investment of $7 million. Twelve new sites are scheduled to be up and running by this October. This concept, I think, is stunning in its simplicity. The pilot goes online and can view two images for each location. The first shows what the site would look like in a perfectly clear day situation. The second shows current weather conditions. Pilots can now learn what the visibility is in the mountain pass they face and whether they want to fly through it before they take off. In many instances, they may decide not to fly, to hold on that flight for a while, depending upon what they see. And that's long before they set foot in the aircraft. Alaska is a huge state, and the area covered so far by weather camps is comparatively small. In order for the project to be completed, 165 already identified sites need to be added. In what may be considered counterintuitive, many of these weather cameras are not placed at airports, but are positioned in or near mountain passes and other geographical areas, which are often used by pilots as navigational aids. Others are located at rural airports, where there are no weather observers or co-located with automated weather systems. Pilots report that the value in these weather cameras is the real-time information they receive about destination and route conditions. Flight service specialists also have access to the weather camera images and routinely brief pilots with the most up-to-date information before takeoff and during their flight. We use the weather cams in, in two basic ways uh, here at the, the flight service station for self-briefing, uh, to get ready to be able to brief the pilots, uh, to uh, look at the weather cam where, uh, where we have an airport with a weather report. We can compare what we see on the screen with what the weather report says. Where we do not have weather reports available, 
then we can look at the, at the camera and again get a, get a picture of uh, what the weather is like at those locations. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is pull up the weather cameras at all the destinations in Southeast and, and check that against the, uh, the actual uh, reports at that, at that station and it gives you a lot better uh, picture of what the weather is doing. Uh, than what we used to enjoy with just the, with just the uh, observation. And I'm, I'm sure all the pilots are doing the same thing. I know all of our pilots do. Uh, a well-placed camera looking in three different directions, there's nothing like that. Be able to see in real time what your weather actually looks like before you take off. Cost benefit is uh, quite a bit. Uh, it started saving us money. As, uh, we don't launch a flight when we know that the weather is good bad, when we can see it on the cameras that the weather is bad at our destination. When the weather cam system was first proposed, there were some people who doubted its uh, utility. And uh, uh, as they've come online, we've, uh, we've seen how the pilots really like to be able to see those pictures. They value it. And uh, as they become available to us as briefers, uh, we value it too. I do thank you also for, for the cameras. I personally have used the cameras with I think that probably the one that's most used is the one over going through the pass into Lake Clark uh, and uh, from time to time I get calls that it may not be functioning properly which uh, I'm pleased to say that Mr. Poe responds to very quickly. During a recent independent study of Alaska pilots who have used the system, 68% reported making decisions to cancel or delay flights based on weather camera information. Pilots also reported that these decisions help them avoid additional fuel costs from flights that must be diverted or repeated due to bad weather. Now, these safety and economic advantages generated more than 2.3 million hits this past year on the FAA's Alaska Weather Cam website. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis. Not a lot of change from uh, what we saw yesterday. Uh, still growing slowly here, east side of, uh, well, from the central areas on off to the east, uh, from what we saw yesterday there. And this uh, closing in a little bit, and the entire uh, pack ice here, the uh, sea ice, um, expanding westward slowly and expect to continue for the next uh, two or three days. On to the coastal water forecast. Small craft advisory southeast 25 on the extreme south coast, 16 foot seas. Gales for much of the central and north coast, southeast 35. Seas near 20 feet, south 30, farther to the north. Link Canal, small craft advisory south 25. Seas 5 feet, southeast at 20 with 4 foot seas there for the uh, Central and Southern Inside Waters, Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage. And then for the uh, outlook on Monday, Southeast 35, so gales in Clarence Strait in the forecast with 10 foot seas, North 20, up there at Stevens Passage, as well as Lynn Canal, seas four feet. Uh, still pretty good breeze, but under gale force here for the coastline, Southeast 30 knots, turn East 30, and then drop down to about 25 there, North Coast with seas 14 to 15 feet. And uh, gales for the North Gulf Coast, 35 to 40 knots, with seas 25 to 28 feet here. Strongest winds, highest seas back to the west, 40 knots uh, up here for the Barren Islands. East 40 knots in for Kamishak Bay, Prince William Sound, southeast 25, six foot seas, and gale warnings for Cook Inlet, northeast 35 knots, seas 9 to 10 feet. And then those come down uh, considerably on Monday, probably Sunday night, and uh, continuing through Monday, north to northeast, 10 to 15 knots, seas down to three feet. East 20 for Kamishak Bay, southeast down to 15, still 10 foot seas for the Barren Islands. East 20 for the North Gulf Coast, seas 12 feet. 15 knot winds, Prince William Sound, seas down to two feet. For Kodiak tomorrow, uh, south, 45 knots, 28 foot seas, and Shelikoff Strait southeast to 30. Gale force winds out of the southwest, Sitka Nak Castle Cape, 35 knots, northwest 30 across the peninsula, seas 11 feet, Bristol Bay north 30 with 8 foot seas. And for Monday, northeast uh, 15 for Bristol Bay, northwest at least 20 to 25 across the peninsula with uh, 8 to 9 foot seas, and lighter winds in store for Kodiak Island, uh, southeast 20, otherwise east 15 for Shelikoff Strait, and north 15 southwest to Sitkanak. Fox Islands tomorrow, 20 to 25 knots, uh, 
out of the northwest, 9 to 11 foot seas there from Alaska Island, and uh, northwest 20 to 25 for Adak and Atka out of the northwest, seas up to 10 feet, and winds diminish down to 15 knots out toward uh, areas west of Kiska Island. And then for Monday, from uh, about Adak on out, 15 knots out of the north, so not too bad, four to five foot seas. A little breezier for Atka, 20 knots, seven foot seas, and the eastern Aleutians. Uh, Looks like on Alaska Island, holding on to those northwesterlies at 25 with 8 to 9 foot seas, otherwise 15 to 20 for Umac Island. And for the southwest coast, north, 25 to 30 knot winds here, strong as south of Nunavak Island with 8 foot seas. Small craft advisories for St. Paul and St. George, uh, seas up to 8 feet. North winds at 20, St. Matthew Island. Back into the small craft advisories for the St. Lawrence Island area, as well as Norton Sound. Outlook for Monday, bring it down to 20 knots there for Norton Sound, seas 4 feet, 30 knot winds, St. Lawrence Island, seas at about 9 feet, and north 20, become northwest 20, south of Nunavak Island. Same thing for the Perloffs, and north 25, seas 9 feet, St. Matthew Island. And uh, for the uh, areas from Wales, on up to Cape Thompson, north 25, good for a small craft advisory, otherwise 20 knot winds here on the west side. Central coast, 15 out of the east, and then Increase as you go eastward there, 25 to as high as 30 knots for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And then on Monday, those come down east-northeast, 15 to 20, or mostly east, all east here on the east side, 15 to 20, northeast 15 on the central coast, four-foot seas, bring it up to 20 knots, and then 25-knot winds. So small craft advisories here from uh, Cape uh, Beaufort all the way down to Wales, 25 to 30 knot winds, eight to nine-foot seas. Tonight, big storm coming up, heavy wind and rain, storm warnings out. Uh, Barren Islands, Kodiak Island area, western Gulf of Alaska, gales everywhere else up along the coast, heavy rain into the uh, Kenai Peninsula, north, western North Gulf Coast, but trying to push eastward, but high pressure holding it off. Tomorrow uh, really has trouble getting into the panhandle, but windy and wet southern Alaska, a little better up to the north. And then on Sunday, or I'm sorry, on Sunday, Monday, that should say, uh, rain and wind in across the southern panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.